Welcome back to another episode guys. The day has come to show you our car. We've had heaps of questions about what we're traveling in and you've seen our van now so we thought we'd do the car tour this week. Yeah, yeah I mean we haven't, it's not, we haven't gone too crazy like if you've been following along you'd know that we had car issues back when we started the trip and we changed cars at Christmas and it was all a bit of a kerfuffle so we sort of we swapped cars like we left and we left for sort of three or four months and then we ended up having to go home at Christmas we swapped cars and we sort of had like a couple of weeks to build this car to get it ready to to travel again so we sort of just chucked everything together quite abruptly mm. and got back on the road and we were using a bit of our like travel budget to change cars <laughs> So I was sort of strict on that, only put on what we absolutely need. Mm. So I kind of reined race in a little bit yeah. there compared to normal. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been a year now that we've been towing a van around Australia with this thing. It's been great. It's worked It's mm. worked perfect, perfect for us. So yeah, saying that, I suppose we'll give us a bit of a gander at what we're, what we're cruising in. Have a look around. <laughs> All right, so. The car is a 2016 Ford Ranger Wild Track and it's a 3.2 diesel six speed automatic. On the front, we've got the AB Summit Bar. Now, the reason we went this is because it was straight off the shelf. Like all, every other bull bar company that we sort of got in contact with, because originally I wanted a few other ones that just looked a bit different. There's massive wait times on bull bars. Like, well, not massive, but you know, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. And we had like a couple of weeks to get this car on the road and leave for Christmas. So went with that. It's been good. It looks good. You would have seen that in Lancelin we had a little prang and it did move and dented the bonnet. Now I don't know whether that was because of something I did installing it. Like every single bolt was torqued to spec. But anyway, for whatever reason, this thing bent back and dented the bonnet. That's life. Other than that, it's been good. So then in the front, we've just got cheapo king's dominator winch went with a cheap one because we didn't plan to do anything too too crazy with a with a newborn baby in the car and we haven't used it in a year so basically it's just been sitting in there for the price i think it's good insurance to have yes an insurance um, policy for sure mm. yeah that's pretty much it's pretty much front. It's suspension it's just a two inch lift all around on the front i went with the I'll show you in here. They're the Bilstein Platinum Platinum shocks and coils from Cal Off Road. And then I've just got Super Pro adjustable upper control arms. And then in the back, I've got 300 kilo constant springs. They're Super Pro as well, I'm pretty sure. They were already on the truck when I bought it. And then I've got the BP51 uh, Old Man Emu shocks. Now they were on the truck as well when I bought it. So I've always been a little bit skeptical to be honest about adjustable shocks, like whether they're sort of a bit gimmicky or whether you need them or whatever. And so far on this trip, they have been the best thing, especially for, for towing, like for doing what we do, because like some weeks you know, we're towing nonstop. Like we're, we're traveling every day. We're sort of moving and moving and moving. And with those shocks, we can, Dot, tight, dial them right up so basically they're stiffer which is really good when you're towing because it, it's just the car on the road just feels a hundred percent better there's no body roll and it's it's a lot comfier to drive basically but then we'll pull up at somewhere like Winder Bandy Point and be staying there for a week without the van you're driving on the beach every day so we can then soften them right up it sort of means that like you have two completely different suspension setups in the one car so yeah, I think they definitely have their place. So yeah, going into the future, I think building a car that we're going to travel in and tow in, I'll probably almost always go adjustable shocks from now on. Moving on. So then we've got, I guess we'll go wheels and tires next. These are Maxxis Razor all terrains. Now I've always had, I had mud terrains on the um, patrol before before we changed to this car. And I went the all terrains just because more or less to try them out, see what they're like. We're gonna do a lot of road case. They're a 28565 R18. Like they're a good tire, but the reason I went to an all terrain was because reading online and whatnot, I figured I'd get 
more Ks. Like, I guess when you read a lot of stuff online, a lot of people are saying they're getting a lot more Ks out of the all-terrain tires, which is, I guess, true. But with the Maxxis, I've found like these are, these are 30,000 Ks old. And man, they have like compared to well, you can see, so this is a tread that's left on them. Like they're getting pretty close to like needing replacing. So they come out of the factory with like quite aggressive. But yeah, I reckon these would be lucky to see 50,000, these these tires, which like, I don't know if that's good or bad, but reading online, a lot of people throw these numbers out there of 80,000 Ks and 100,000 Ks that they're getting out of their all terrain. So. If we were to go another set of all trains, I probably wouldn't go the Maxxis in terms of longevity because we're doing a lot of Ks, it just costs you a lot. Like these are, I think around $500 a tire. So to get, yeah, only that amount of Ks out of it, not ideal. Blabbed on a bit there, but they are wrapped around a, they're just a Hustler. They're an 18 Hustler. They were on the truck when I bought it. Ideally, they'd be a 17. But, you know, it is what it is. That's them. <laughs> Alright, we'll move on to the canopy. Now this thing is, it's a ARB Accents canopy. It was also on the truck when I bought it. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing because it looks good. Can I butt in and say that was one of the things I really wanted, a canopy on the truck already. Like we obviously needed to get going quite quickly once we changed cars. So. One of the things I loved about this car is it had the nice canopy to begin with. So that was, that's my two cents. Yeah. The canopy for me was really important because I... It is, but... Yeah, the that, back door. This thing is... It's really good, it looks really good, but it's all electronic. So if you come around this side, there's no latches on here. The little latch is a little push button. In, in behind here is how you unlatch it, which is all cool. Right. Works good, looks good. And then the back, the back is just a, an electric button here. Ours just doesn't, doesn't even work. So oh. basically you need to un, undo this every single time with the key, which is a pain in the ass just because the electronic mechanism, I'm not sure it's got mm. dirt in it or something, it's just stopped working. But the other annoying thing is Every now and then when you unlock the car, so it's all, it's all connected to the central locking system. Every now and then when you unlock the car, it actually unlatches this rear door. So it unlatches it, so it's sitting just like that. And then you'll be driving down the highway and look in the mirror and your friggin' door's up like this, which is very frustrating because mm. I've got my board sitting like right here, so that can shoot out very easily. I was just gonna say that I love these. I think these are awesome. They Having it electronic and being able to access it. Mm. But yeah, I had forgotten about those times yeah. it happened. So all in all, like if I was gonna get another canopy, I probably wouldn't buy this one. I would buy one with just mechanical, you know, it's a little bit more effort to do the mechanical latches and whatever. But at least you know for the majority of the time, as long as you can turn that thing, it's gonna open or close. Like this thing, it's a bit annoying, like all the little electrical things that like, you know, this, this thing, you can't even get into it without the key. And anyway, that's that. So then it has the load, the load rated bar system inside and then up on top, try and climb up here, which I've, I've already smashed this up on top. We've got this huge solar panel and it's mounted, it's mounted onto this rail support system that comes with it. Now I, I dropped my, uh, my kayak on this and it shattered the other, well, a while ago now, so I need to actually pull that off and get rid of it before it fries glass everywhere. But yeah, we'll keep moving around. So, snorkel. Now, this is another one that, this is just a cheapie off eBay. I think it was like a hundred and something bucks. The reason I went with this one was um, was mainly because it, it mounts up through, like I'll show you on the other side, or well here. Basically you don't have to do, you have to do no drilling, no holes, no anything. It mounts up through this plastic thing, pulls out on the other side. It pulls out on this side and it all mounts through there. It's a bit of a drama, like getting it through the guard, all the, all the, cyst, like the rest of the intake through there. But for me, like, 
not having to drill into this, not having to cut into it, not having to wait for a Stano one to get made and sent out and whatever. For the price, like, I figured, and I have heard, like, you know, these maybe fade quicker. They look a bit uglier once they've faded and stuff. But, I mean, this is a year old. And for 130 bucks, when it eventually fades, you just buy another one and chuck it on there. You only have to take three little bolts out and you can put a brand spanker on there for 130 bucks. So, and yeah, I added a bit of extra sicker flex on the joins because the joins were a bit dodgy. They were sort of foam. So I whacked a bit of that stuff on there and things been sweet. Yeah, so far so good. And then we got the MSA. These things are sick. I love these. So these are the MSA pull out towing mirrors. Now the reason we went with these is because on the patrol we had the big elephant ear ones. They were a knockoff clear view. They weren't clear view, so I can't I can't speak for how the clear view ones are. But the issue we had with them because they were folding in, driving on the highway, they wouldn't actually fold in, but they'd have pressure on them from the wind, and it would just put the view out. So you'd electronically, well, you'd move the mirror out, but then when you came off the highway, it would it wouldn't have that wind pressure on it, it'd move back out and the mirror, was, you're constantly adjusting it, it was just a pain in the ass. Whereas these are fixed and they don't go anywhere. Like you just set the mirror up and they're sweet. Roof rack, it's just a Rhino platform rack with, I think it's backbone system it's called. It's awesome, it's been really good. I'll jump up, give you some look. So yeah, it works really good because you can basically just slide all these little, there's so many different little, uh, accessories and mounts and stuff that just slide into these grooves and you can pretty well mount anything like we've got the treads up here this is up here just that was meant to hold the kayak from from doing that but it obviously didn't work and then on the front of that i've got just a steady i want to say it's 50 inch but i'm not sure round curved light bar that was on the truck when i bought it as well so it, it works fine for us like we don't do heaps of but that's the only light we have in terms of like aftermarket spotlight sort of things and yeah like we don't do much night driving like we try and avoid it and obviously with the little one like we don't do much of it but when we do do it that thing's like insane like there's so much there's so much light i can't say how you'd want more light than that but yeah we don't do it like i said we don't do a lot of night driving so that's perfect for us then on this side just got King's awning. I mean, 90 bucks or whatever they are. They're fine for like we use it like once in a blue moon on the beach or whatever, but like rarely, rarely sort of use that. And then I've just got a a shovel mounted up there with just the, these like gorilla grip, gorilla grip sort of mounts. Which are really good. I quite like them. Yeah, they're nice. great. They're awesome. Especially for a shorty like me. I can't really reach very well, so it needs to be easy. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty well... It's pretty well all of the outside, I think. Oh, and we put these flares on, too. Now, this was a oh, the flares. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, these flares, I had to put these on because the tyres were outside of the guard. And after our whole rigmarole with the first... With the patrol, the car that we started in, I was like, this thing, I just want to keep it as legal as possible and yeah put the flares on ordered them in the wrong color <laughs> didn't notice until i put these on the day before like these came in the mail the day before we were leaving on to, to leave again finally got here put them on the car that night in in the light in the light in the shed and i was like far out they look kind of the wrong color in the morning reverse car out definitely the wrong color very frustrated at myself it was my own fault but anyway, then I ended up like out in West New South Wales. I ended up getting Kuna a company, Coona Barra Brand. Yeah. Can't even remember what the company was. They painted them. I took them all off and drove at like 5 a.m. through to the town, which is a couple of hours away, and, and got them sprayed and put them all back on. So now they're the right color and they look sweet. <laughs> all right, there, there are EGR flares, by the way. Righty, we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of a gaze at what's in the back of this guy. So annoying, man. Can't remember what brand. These were just off the internet. Uh, but these are just like the soft, open, little strut sort of setup that you can put on these back doors. Definitely recommend. Yeah. I found I found that door so heavy when I was pulling it down. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, like, great product. But we've got, like, dust or something in this one. And it just makes... 
the most annoying noise, man. <laughs> I'd take that over the heaviness. Of yeah, it. yeah. I mean, and I probably can just put some grease on it or something and fix it. But anyway, that's that. All right. So where do we start? So yeah, Bushman's 85 liter. Great fridge. It's got the little freezer as well, which you always load it up. Full of bait. Yeah. But anyway. And then just the Bushman's aluminium surround that they build. Now I went that because obviously we're time poor. We're just trying to get this thing in and, and go. And I had this set up in the old patrol, but I had like a full timber surround that I'd built and all this all this stuff in the patrol. And I just didn't have time to do all that again. So these are like 450 bucks. They're super slim. They're super easy to put in. So yeah, we just bolted that in and it, it works great. The only qualm we have is all the screws keep like rattling loose. See, like, man, I need to like, well, they, they're going into where they mount, where they mount the box to the fridge. They just constantly come loose. I don't know whether that's like something that everyone's experiencing or just me, but anyway, that's that. On the front of the fridge, I've just got this, uh, the moose. <laughs> I don't even know how to say that, but it's basically a back of the seat organizer that goes on the back of your chair. And I pretty much just like screwed it into the front of the fridge on the door. And it's it's great, eh? Like it's really good. It's really good having that, all that stuff there, like really accessible. And yeah, that, I'm sort of stoked that I did that really. All right, so then draw system. This is just a King's, a King's Super Santa drawer. So yeah, in the King's drawer, I just keep basically my tools and then just like jet foil. That's a solar blanket, um, just some plates and random, random bits and pieces. What I will say about these is I'll probably never buy one again. Mainly, I've had a few now in different trucks, but I've never obviously had one in a truck that we've been living out of. And it's really, really annoying that I don't know if you can see in here, but basically you can't fill the drawers up because this metal bar through here catches everything. And what happens is if you put something in there and close it, if you put something in there and close it and it's higher than that bar, it gets jammed and you can't pull the door out. So, so many times I've been in here trying to unwedge whatever's in there. It's just a pain in the ass. So yeah, next time around, I would probably go like a timber drawer or a drawer system that you can fill the drawer right to the top and it's just ply at the top. So there's nothing that it can catch on. Like you can fill the drawer and you're not, it's not getting jammed on anything. Nothing's gonna catch on any cross members or anything like that. And they're quite heavy too. So anyway, that's my, that's my qualms with the King's drawers. It's a pain in the ass. Other than that, it's a drawer. So I took the top off the drawer and just made a piece of ply that actually wraps around the back of the fridge. So I'll just quickly show you. So yeah, this bit of ply just comes around behind the fridge. Obviously balls up the measurement a little bit, kook, but anyway. Then, yeah, that wraps around and that wraps around to house. So this lifts up, this section lifts up and I have, I've got a lithium 120x uh, iTech world lithium battery in there, which runs a fridge awesome. And then around here, I've got the BC, Red Art BCDC charger. That's a 40 amp charger to pump some juice into the lithium. And then I have I've got this, it's a Anadrive, I think it's a, a little say on the front there, pretty sure it's an 800 watt and just a fire extinguisher. Probably wouldn't put put one of them again in the Ranger just because we don't use it. The Ranger comes factory in here with its own little 240 inverter for charging. Like we charge all our camera gear and laptops and stuff if we're driving around and need to off that. And I never even use that inverter. So I probably wouldn't have even put that in again. But yeah, that's basically the 12 volt setup is just the Red Arc BCDC, the iTech World 120. It works awesome. The fridge is just on permanently. I've got the solar panel up on the top. And then in this side, in here, I've got a, just an ARB compressor with a little outlet. So it's just housed in this wing. And I've also got the water pump. So basically I've got a little tap here. This is my little hose. So I can plug this onto here like that run this out. I usually hook it up on here with a little shower outlet. 
that runs off this 50 litre water tank that's in here. So this is made by Iron Man. And yeah, it runs through a little water pump tucked down in here. Probably can't see very well. There's a water pump in there. So yeah, that's more or less just for like when we're at the beach or want to wash up or transport some water back to the back to the caravan or whatever, we use that. And it's just run off a little switch here. But yeah, that's our water setup. And then I've also got these Boab boxes. Now these are really good. They're, up, they're pretty well the same as front runner boxes. They make the same. I think they're called like a wolf pack or something. But these are awesome. Like they stack straight on top of each other. They hardly move around. And I've got recovery gear and stuff in there, some jumper leads. And then in the bottom one, I just keep my, all my battery kit, my battery tools. So that's all my Milwaukee stuff in there. Something else that's really handy is this. So we've got this section here that we store our little cool cabana in. So this is what we usually use. We're at the beach, that's, that's what we use rather than the awning or whatever. So we just rip that out and uh, take it down. It fits in there perfect. It's, it's actually super handy. That's about it for the back. It's a pretty basic sort of setup. Right, oh, we'll, uh, we'll jump inside. There's not a lot going on in there, but we'll have a bit of a look. First up, we've, so we've got the Hema. This is just the HX1. We use this a lot if we're sort of out remote traveling, like in town and whatever, we just use the Android Auto on the head unit to, to navigate. But as soon as we get out in the bush or anything like that, the, uh, the Hema HX1, it's awesome. So yeah, we use that. And then we've just got GME XRS. This is really handy because you can sort of tuck away like the, um, tuck away the main unit and just have this sort of out on your dash. And that's mounted to these little metal brackets. You can just get these online. I've got a little magnetic phone mount here for my phone. And then obviously we've got the tow pro here. That's just a red arc tow pro. And then this up here, which won't stick because this thing literally cost me about $40. That's a little, that's a little camera, reverse camera screen that I bought off eBay. And it literally runs down here. It's just plugged into the cigarette lighter. That runs back. Yeah, nice. I got me up. Camera girl back. <laughs> All right, that runs. That runs back to the bathroom. To this little setup here. So this this setup was actually quite expensive. So that little screen was about forty dollars, and then this little bracket and this connector, and I've got like a bungee cord that connects connects to the uh, caravan. That's how I connect to the caravan rear view, uh, rear view camera, which which it already had on it. So that works perfect. It runs all the time. So I can basically all the time see what's behind the caravan. So yeah, that $40 was without the cord. The cord setup was about a hundred bucks. And then the camera was obviously already on the, on the caravan. So uh, this is Lila's little cockpit. Just got books. Just distractions, distractions everywhere. Books, got a little first aid kit over there. We got raincoats in the door there. You're okay, mate. Raincoats in the door there. Christmas bonbons. Not sure why they're in here. Just getting festive. Yeah, and then just a bag. That's pretty much it for the back. Like we haven't done much. Like, we've kept it pretty basic. Okay. So yeah, they, these um the wild tracks they've already got like so much stuff. Like I said, like this is they've already got their that own is inverter. Amazing. So that's where we charge our laptops and stuff while we're driving. Yeah, they're they're pretty suave in here, aren't they? And leather having little ones it or is. little one, the leather is really nice. Big, like it's a lot easier to keep clean. Big food stain zone right here. Yeah, it's luckily constantly it's leather. Food stain. And it is nice. It's sort of you can sort of set it up quite well for traveling which is good mm. yeah all right we'll jump under the bonnet and have a quick gander and that'll just be able to do it come on mate. all right so pretty basic under here we'll start over here so we've basically got a provent catch can and a, a pre fuel filter and water separator then we just have Harrop. This is just a Harrop like hard pipe intercooler kit for the for the Ranger. So it basically just deletes 
It's the factory like rubber intercooler hoses that come on these things. So also in the front there, you can see just here, um, probably see it better there. That's a uh, an auto transmission cooler as well. So yeah, that works really good as well. That brought our temps down from like, I think while towing our transmission temps were up around like 100, 107 degrees or something. And now they're sort of steadily on like 70 when I'm towing. So that was, yeah, the transmission cooler and also like a bypass valve was put in the, the box when we when we got all that done as well. So yeah, definitely recommend doing that if you're towing with one of these autos. This came with the car, it's electronic rust protection. Not 100% sure whether they work or not, but it was on the car, so hey, may as well leave it. Other than that, it has had a churn. I got it churned by a horsepower factory down in Melbourne. So yeah, that made a bit of a difference. Like it, it definitely pulls the van a lot better. But other than that, it's more or less just stock. Haven't done that too much to it. And yeah, so far it's been pretty good. Haven't really had like a few little random sort of electrical gremlins. Um, but other than that, it's been it's been pretty good. Just trying to think if I've missed anything under here. Don't think I have. So yeah, that's a bit of a uh, basic look around our truck. Obviously we didn't go too crazy into like the specs on everything because pretty much everything on this car, there's a video on YouTube with a very in-depth sort of overview of all its specs and whatnot. So if you do have any questions, feel free to hit us up. We can give you some specs or if you want to know a bit more information about something or why we did something or whatnot, um, hit us up in the comments or on Instagram or whatever and we'll be happy to fill you in on anything you sort of want to know. But yeah, all in all, we're, uh, we're super happy with the Ranger. It's, it's sick, it's really comfy. It's just easy, everything works. So yeah, I think, I don't think I've missed anything. I think, I think we've pretty well covered most stuff and yeah that'll probably be it we're probably gonna leave it there so yeah like i said if, you, if you've got any more questions hit us up be happy to help you see out with sort of any more information you want to know and yeah until next week guys that'll be it